Hey guys, so working on the three quarter ton a little bit today. Um, wasn't planning on working on it, but I got a vibration that I haven't been able to figure out. Well, I shouldn't say I haven't been able to figure out. I'm looking at, I just started looking at it. So I thought maybe I had a U-joint going out. I, the U-joints are good. I got the drive shaft pulled out right there. I am gonna reset pinion angle because the pinion angle is not right. I'll, that'll be a separate video. Um, but it'll be doing it at the same time as this. Um, I just got to get some U-bolts tomorrow and I'm going to put the original stock block back in. But I'm going to pull the diff cover off. We're going to do a, diff, a complete diff service on this. I shouldn't say a complete diff service. What most people are going to do for a diff service. And I think I'm going to reset backlash because the backlash is definitely higher than it's supposed to. So I had this rear end built by somebody else years ago. And because I didn't have time at the time and I should have just done it myself. Anyways, we won't get into it. So we are gonna pull this pan off and we're gonna clean up. I'm almost wondering whether I should weld this up. So you can see how it's leaking a little bit. It's just starting to seep. And what happens is, is these are siliconed it. Like they press them in, but they put a silicone in there and they'll start to leak. And that's what's happening there. It's just a seep. It's not gonna hurt anything, it just looks ugly. But not that the diff is super clean anyway. But we're going to get this cover pulled off, see what we got for a backlash. I'll show you how to check backlash, and then we'll go from there. So I'll throw this into time lapse, and we'll pull the cover off, and I'll be back after. Right, guys so we got the cover off and you can see I got the gauge set up you will need a gauge for doing this to do it properly you can buy these pretty cheap off Amazon I'll put a link it's this isn't like a cheap cheap one but it's not an expensive one you don't need a super expensive one for the average guy um, but basically what you want to do is you want to figure out where your zero is right so yeah I got that set at zero right hopefully you guys can read that and then all you're going to do is now just move it up. So usually you can just wiggle it back and forth a few times just to see where you where you got it. But I'm about 15, 16 thou backlash, which is considerably more than it should have. It should have, I think spec is, uh, I'll, put, I'll put spec here. I don't remember off the top of my head, but definitely less than 10. So... I think being that I'm this far into it, we are going to pull the axles out, pull the carrier out, and we're going to move some shim around to pull some backlash out of it because this thing engages pretty hard. So the transmission, it is a performance transmission, right? So the performance transmission is going to shift hard. Well, when you put it into reverse or into drive or when it shifts, because there's that lap, that backlash there, um, they're relatively violent. Now, that's something I'm probably gonna get into maybe. Um, I didn't build the transmission in this. My buddy Carl built the transmission in this. Transmission works flawless, um, but it definitely engages into reverse a little harder than I would like it to. But you gotta give and take. This transmission has been in this truck. We had it out once and went through it and the only thing we changed was one of the bands just because it had a little bit of funny coloring to it other than that the transmission um, was good i have put about a hundred i would say 175,000 miles on this transmission um, and none of them were anywhere near stock i tow with it i wrap bag it but i don't overheat it and i always let it warm up a little bit so, you know, it's one of those things. I just like to mention that. Like, lots of guys, all these things, transmissions are junk. They're built by the right person or built properly. They're just fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Just, you don't know how to build a transmission. So, I am going to put you back in a time lapse. And I'm going to pull the axles out. And we're going to pull the carrier out. Because, like I said, I want to tighten up that lash a little bit. So, all right. Well, let's get after it here.
right guys, so you seen that I just pulled that bearing off with this tool, super hand, handy tool. Um, if you guys are doing differential stuff, you should definitely have one of these. I have, um, there'll be a link in the description for it. If you show sell, this is the one, this, the one that I have in the link in the description is the one that you see here. So it seems to work just fine. It's not a super expensive one. If you're not doing it all the time, you don't need a super expensive one. So basically to make this simple, Basically, all I'm doing <clears throat> is I want to take six. We're at 16. I'd really like to end up being at about nine. So I am going to pull this shim off of this side, which is going to shove the whole carrier towards the pinion. Um, I'm going to take this out, which is six thou, which in turn will move the carrier over six thou. So that we'll have to pull the bearing off the other side and put this shim in there so that you keep the preload because the preload was pretty good. So um, what I am waiting for right now is the bearing in the my toaster oven because that's what I use for, for heating bearings. Is I just bought a, well, years ago now, just a cheap toaster oven. I put it on bagel and uh, cook bearing. So you're trying to get the bearing basically like straw hot. I don't honestly know what temperature it is, but when it goes to kind of a straw color, um, or just before that, I want to say it's like 375 degrees or something is what you're supposed to do. I'll put it here. I honestly can't remember the actual temperature. I haven't done it that way in a long time. Um, pulled the carrier all out. I got, see, I got a little bit of, I don't know if it's paint or what it is that's in there. Kind of looks like, I don't know, something. I'm going to scrape that out anyway. So something that I wanted to mention to you guys, especially on these diffs, is you see these rings, they go on the outside of the bearings on, on this style of diff or on a Dana 80. Some of the 60s are like that. I honestly don't know if I've ever seen a 70 that's like that. Anyways, they're not always the same thickness. So you want to make sure if you're taking this apart just to reset, um, you know, pinion or, or put a new pinion bearing in it or, you know, setting um, the, uh, lash up or something resetting lash or setting lash is that they're not the same thickness so this one is um 197 thou thick and then this one is 197 thou no that one's 197 thou this one's 194 thou or three thou or something like that anyway now some of you guys are going to say well why don't you just switch those around you take a few thou out you are correct but i'm going to leave those there so that if I don't have enough, I can switch them around and pull a little bit more out of it, was the thought in my head, then I don't have to take bearings off twice. Because I don't really like having to take the bearings off if you don't have to, right? If that was like a six thou spread, um, I would have done that. But it's not a six thou thread, it's only a couple thou, three thou, I think. So anyways, that's the reason I didn't do that, but make sure you keep those in the right spot. Usually what I do is I actually hang them off the shock on these. Um, that's how I usually do it. But this one, this truck has these big long bolts that I never cut off because apparently I'm lazy to hang them on. So that works out good. You want to make sure you brake clean all that out good. You can see that when the, this was apart last time, they didn't clean it very well. Anyways, we'll get into that. Diff covers clean. I put it in my parts washer. Now, something else. You guys would have seen me in the video. But see how I marked these? Um, imagine you, oh yeah, you can see it. I think you can see it anyway. It's hard to tell sometimes if you guys would be able to see this stuff. I have these backwards, but all I did was mark them with a set of punches, left and right, and then obviously left and right, left being the left-hand side when you're looking at the diff, and right being right-hand side because you can't look at it backwards. So make sure you put them back on the right side because this is line board, and if you put them in wrong, you'll screw stuff up. So we will wait for that bearing to get warmed up, which it's smoking, so it's starting to get warmed up. We'll do that, drop that one on there, and then I'll pull the other one off. We'll do a repeat. So I'm going to throw you guys back in new time lapse, and you can see. I'll probably back. Actually, you know what? I am going to wait until that's done. I'll turn the camera back. I'll turn the camera back on, and then when um, I'm ready to do the other one, I'll do it in real time to pull the bearing off so you can see it for you guys that have never seen that. So see you in a bit. All right, guys, we're going to pull this bearing off here so that we can put this 
shim that I took from the other side. I can't even pick it up. The shim on. So this tool is super easy to use. All you have to do is select the right one of these. And you also need this in there. Basically so that can push down on it, right? And you have to get this piece here so that this clamps on, but it's tight. It doesn't move around too much because you don't want it to move around. Put this piece on and tighten it. And then make sure this is oiled. Lube is your friend. Voila, takes the bearing off and doesn't even wreck it. So I am going to put this in the oven now and heat it and drop it back on there. Put that shim on there so we don't forget. But I gotta wash this first. guys so you see in the time lapse Shay and I Shay having to drop by help me out but we got the carrier back in the truck I got it I just finished torquing it I realized that I didn't have the camera on I just I torqued it 80 foot pounds not every diff is the same this one is 80 foot pounds for your caps um, I got the cover all cleaned now I know a lot of people don't agree with me doing this but you can do as you may is I put a little tiny bit of case sealant RTV or whatever on the very outside um, where the o on this side of the o-ring and the reason I do that is if you don't do that in our climate you will get corrosion in there and it'll wreck the cover so I just put a little bit tiny bit in there so that the cover doesn't get wrecked and you don't get a bunch of rust in in around there that's the reason that I do that um, if you want to cool if you don't want to also cool uh, that's the reason I do it so we are going to I got that all wiped down with, with um, brake clean, so it's all dry. This is all ready to go. We are gonna put the cover on, put all the bolts in it, tighten all those up, and then we're gonna get the axle ends resealed back up. And I'm just gonna put new, clean it up, put new gaskets in it. And then uh, we can. Uh, I'm gonna let it sit 15, 20 minutes uh, just so that case sealant can set up, make sure that it doesn't leak just in case the O-ring happens to have a nick in it. Um, and then I'm going to put the rear drive shaft back in, but I am going to put a, if I have one, I'm going to put a output seal for the transfer case because it was leaking a little bit. So I'll probably do that. So that is what I'm doing. So let's get after doing it. And uh, yeah, I'll come to you when I get to a point where I think you should want to see something. Well, guys, I guess I didn't film an outro for this. I thought I did, but that's okay. It's not a huge deal. Just got the bolts put back in. Um, the axles and all that stuff sealed up. Everything's good to go. Uh, ended up with a about a nine thou um, preload or a nine thou backlash. Um, it's not an exact science moving them over. If you move it over five thou, lots of times it depends on your preload and all that stuff. So I ended up with nine thou, which I'm happy with. It could have been a little tighter, but that's not a huge deal. Diff does have a bunch of miles on it now, so and it does shift. Um, going in and out of gear much nicer than it used to. So that was the object of the game and to check some stuff out. So uh, like, subscribe, hit me down in the comments. And uh, remember, it's not rocket science. So if you're going to be dumb, you better be tough. And check out the next video.